I was born in Newcastle and grew up in Maitland, and uh, it was not at that time a cultural hub. Things like live performance were pretty thin on the ground, so I was very thrilled and excited whenever a live show came to town. When I was about 14, we were marched off to the cinema to see Olivia's Henry V, and that was the one that bowled me over. I just loved it. And I didn't realize until then that people could speak so well and say such magical things. And uh, I walked out of the cinema, and all the other kids went off home, but I went back in and sat through it again because I couldn't quite believe what I just experienced. And I came out and said to myself, this is the age of 14, I'm going to be an actor and I'm going to do Shakespeare for the rest of my life. I made that pact with myself, that then and there. To die, to sleep no more. And by a sleep to say we end the heartache. In my early career, I went to England and joined the Royal Shakespeare Company, where I played for five years. I came back to Australia. Um, I taught at NIDA for a year, and then with a partner, Ken Haller, created the Nimrod Theatre, which is now the Stables in King's Cross. And uh, that was based on promoting new Australian plays and new Australian writing. But every year we would do a Shakespeare to pay the rent. After 14 years of the Nimrod, I was approached by uh, the late Tony Gilbert, who said, uh, I've got some money put aside, I'd like to see used pr to promote Shakespeare. Should I start a foundation or a scholarship? And I said, no, you should start a theatre company. With the rather large ambitions to take large-scale productions of Shakespeare all over Australia, even to the most remote areas, and to perform them in ways that uh, would relate to an Australian audience. Once more unto the breach, dear friend, once more! We continued experimenting with Shakespeare and finding Australian ways of performing Shakespeare to make it significant and, and um, recognisable to a, a modern Australian audience. So that became part of my great passion. How do we do them in a way that belongs to us? And what is in that word of oh. air? A true record. Who hath it? He that died on Wednesday. When we first started this experiment with the uh, what you might call an Australian Shakespeare, uh, it was still being done in so-called period costume. It's now, I think, almost universal that Shakespeare's nearly always done in modern dress, because I think we're all after the same thing, to bring the play right into focus and say, this is who these people are, this is the situation, these are the politics, this is the war we're talking about, these are the sexual politics we're talking about, this is why the play still matters. Deformed. Unfinished. Sent before my time into this breathing world, scarce half made up, and that's so lamely and unfashionable that dogs bark at me as I halt by them. I think Shakespeare moved theatre on from where he found it in terms of characterization, and he was able to take all these different characters and infuse them with a reality and a, a freshness. Guilty! Guilty! I shall despair. There is no creature loves me. Characters stopped being predictable types and became real, living, contradictory human beings, which is why they can be interpreted by so many actors in different ways. The actor has to bring something of his or her personality and speak through the character. I will do such things! What they are yet, I know not, but they shall be the terrors of the earth. I used acting as a way of uh, exploring myself, where you declare your inmost secrets to the audience through a character, through a play. You reveal yourself, and that's what is, is most exciting about acting. It does redeem all sorrows that ever I have felt. Oh, my good master. Pretty away. It's noble Kent, your friend. A plague upon you, murderers. Faith us all, I might have saved her. examining the great questions of life through the characters, and who better than Shakespeare to talk about destiny or fate or uh, questions of life and death and honour and ambition and treachery, all those big issues. Monarchs to behold the swelling sea. 
people act for various different reasons, and that those reasons may change as you grow older. Even she, who got a beast that once discourse of reason would have mourned longer. I think when you're very young, it's to do with exploring the world. In later years, it's become more a matter of craft, I think, like a potter who throws a wheel and says, look, I've made this thing, have a look at it. How do you like it? And you show this to the audience, and hopefully it's something they'll um, appreciate and admire the skill that has gone into making it. Alas, my lord, I have but killed a fly. But how if that fly had a mother and a father? Oh. How would he hang his slender gilded wings and buzz lamenting doings in the air? Poor harmless fly. I was really paying back my debt to those touring companies who came to Maitland in the early days and gave me the thrill of seeing Shakespeare live. I wanted to give that same thrill to people in country towns and the outback. Above all, I think, was the desire to, um, to make Shakespeare our own.